In this video, we are back at Cambrian Classics to get all waxy with our Daihatsu Syrian. We're going to use a couple of different products today, clean it up as best we can underneath, have a look at the slightly questionable area of welding, but mostly fill this car with wax to stop it corroding in the lovely Welsh climate. So Tim is going to be doing much of the waxing today. What products do we have to play with today? And because this car's so nice underneath, still very red, it's got the factory under seal. It's kind of nice to keep that look. So mm. um, we're going to use Morris Anchor Wax. It's a, it's a bit like a clear wax oil, but it's much runnier. It gets into the corners a lot better. Mm. You'd have to thin it or get it really, really hot like you do with wax oil, okay. which is my complaint with wax oil. Really. Yeah. It's, 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 it's thick and gloopy and you've got to get this hot and everything. So for, for inside the cavities, we use that and also with well with this gun there's two attachments one's a uh, nozzle that'll go into the cavities and it sprays mm -hmm. a fan oh, yeah. out so you, you push it all the way in and as you pull pull it back out it there's a fan all the way along the box section mm -hmm. and then we've got a directional nozzle then for doing the underneath so that's that and it uses high pr a pressurized container then and really vaporizes it really nicely mm -hmm. this i do use this hammer wax oil product uh, which is a half body shirts Halfway between a stone chip and a wax oil. It mm -hmm. gives you that underbody protection and stone chipping, but it's got a, wa a waxy product to it. Um, and then if, we, if there's any bare metal areas and we can put a gentle light yeah, on we, it. To... We do suspect it's like the inner sills, isn't it? Right along the inside. Yeah, so we're have going to initial look. That, yeah, clean that back to bare metal, maybe mm -hmm. a touch of primer, and then, and then we can put this on top of the areas that, that have gone rusty because mm -hmm. um, it's got a lot more body. This, this is more of a... Um, you know, a clear wax and be nice to cover yeah. up the rust. And... Yeah, anchor wax is hugely popular with the um, modification crowd. Those rat look cars, if they actually want to maintain their rat look rather than just let the car rust away, they tend to go over it with anchor wax because it sort of doesn't destroy the look of their cars, but um, it protects that patination that they do crave so much. Mm. So it, yeah, it's good it, stuff. It's very good. Yeah, it, it's very good for you know keeping the salt away mm -hmm. and moisture away, um, and it's it's the thinness of it really. If you compare it to wax oil, how... yeah, and aren't Morris based somewhere like Shrewsbury. Yes, they're, they're not a million miles away. That's right. Um, I use their, their classic range of oils as well for mm -hmm. for, for the older cars um, because the, the, a lot of work goes into getting the formulation right. The Morris Golden Film is a big range. They even yeah. do classic gear oils with the additives that are right for the old gearboxes with bronze components and, mm -hmm. and things to stop uh, stop the wear because the, the modern EP oils does eat away at classic gearboxes yeah. so you've got to be careful with that. But, good stuff and yeah. none of this is sponsored we're mentioning products. No no I just like products. the product. Yeah, it's products good product. that work yeah. so uh, yeah. yeah we are not being paid to go oh this is good these are what we have chosen to use based on Tim's experience so yes little Daihatsu trims are off already we'll get the wheels off remove as many trim bits as we can underneath and uh, get waxing. Well, we're just removing uh, as much trim as we can. I did want to get these off because my previous one had rotted very horribly around there, but I think we can actually get to the seam on the inside. And these seem to be bonded in place. But uh, Tim's been disassembling the front and getting the wheel arch liners out. Yeah. So you see here, without if we'd have done it without taking the wheel arch liners off, we never would have seen yeah, all grief. this. Pack between the sill and the you know wing, I suppose. Yeah, and structure of the car. Well. It's all full of mud and stuff that's come down from the scuffle. So I'm gonna try and dig all that out. Mm. Um, handily, we do have some blanking plugs here. Uh -huh. So hopefully we might not. We've also right. got the trim holes as well, the clips that hold this on. Yeah, so we may have There's, access. Yeah, you know, I don't think we need to drill any more holes for access to the cavities, but we'll pop those out. And um, Yeah, this, this is after I jet washed the car last week, but obviously you can't get into all areas. No, it's all it's behind protected. the plastic trim. Yeah, and the same sort of story down here, all this moisture trapped beautifully in that joint. That's where the mud flap was. Yeah. Uh, it was up, up there. So I'm just starting to take that off on the other side. Just trying to unbolt the mud flap so we can get this in a uh, trim out as well. Oh, there it goes. There we go. We've got the um, sill trim off. So the question is, what lurks beneath? Well, an awful lot of mud that we need to try and clean out of here. But look at that. Yeah, okay. Both sides are lovely. Yeah, it's, remarkable. Uh, yeah, some clear wax over, over that before we put the cover back on again. Yeah. It'll be fine for decades. That's amazing. Yeah, there seems to be two layers to the sill looking at it. Yeah, two uh, or even three. Yeah, that, well, two, two voids to try and fill. One we can get to through the clip holes on the outside yeah. with the probe. The other one, there's 
blanking plugs in the end that I think we should, we'll have a go taking those out and seeing whether we can yeah. see all the way along. And we might not have to drill any holes, which would be nice. Mm. The worst um, things to get are these, the little square section thing on the back, but you've got to try and squeeze, but I can't find the squeeze point on them. No, and leverage uh, and... They're, they're very, very strong, but uh, I'm sure we can defeat them. We already have on the other side. Spoiler alert, we've already got the other one off. And it's much the same story here, it's lovely and solid. Yeah, if you look straight up as well, it's the wheel arch protectors just saved so much up yeah. there. It's really clean. Crikey. Now the problem with old cars is uh, you find things like this. We've had a dig around here and found a, a nasty bit of rot in that section. So Tim is currently um, marking out good old cardboard aided design marking out a little repair panel. It's a tricky old spot to get into though, because obviously it's quite tight here, but we might just fiberglass this in and call that done. No, no, we are going to put actual proper metal in. There's some bubbling here as well, but that is still solid. But I think we've got um, several different skins of metal here and huge gaps some moisture can get in. So we're going to try and block those up a bit, I think, um, as part of today's shenanigans. One nicely formed little repair section, ready to be zapped in. So I shall stand well clear. So welding is in progress and uh, that's looking quite nice. But uh, unfortunately, while well, Tim's been working here, this has gone through. Perhaps unsurprisingly, if there's bubbling, uh, that means there's probably not much under the paint. So this job has just got a little bigger. Before you know it, you've got a lovely handy access hole for putting wax in. And uh, unfortunately, we've got the similar trouble on this side. This is almost certainly going to be as bad, but we have to limit what we do today. There just isn't time to address everything. We haven't got time to address that this time around. There's some iffy spots on the floor along here, but aren't yet holed. But, you know, we'll need work at some point in the future. But uh, yeah, we shall do what we can for now. So there we go, we've got the outside looking much more solid. Uh, the prettiness doesn't really matter because we're going to cover it up anyway. So it's not like we've got to try and blend it in with this lovely um, uh, metallic red paintwork. But yeah, these things can quickly escalate and it's amazing how long it takes to sort out stuff like that. Meanwhile, I'm here desperately trying to clear as much crud as I can out of this cavity down here and try and get it dried out in there. Uh, try and film in there. It is so mucky, so much dirt has come out. I've already swept up once and uh, all this has come out and the same again on the other side. So yeah, trying to get this prepared as well as possible. Proving a little tricky, I think. The drain from the bulkhead probably comes down into here. So there's all manner of crud and nastiness in there. After many, many hours, we're kind of at um, stage one of actually getting to wax it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. What, what are we doing first? Right. Well, we put a little bit of primer on, the, on and some Genolite as well on the, on the rest of it, so the back of the sill. So mm -hmm. while that's curing and everything, we're going to mask the car up. I find it's much quicker to mask the car with film rather than spending ages trying to, trying to get the overspray and, yeah, off the doors. Yeah. Because it tends, because it's like quite high pressure, it tends to swirl around and right, you end up yeah. with overspray up the side, especially when you're doing backs of the sills, because it, it kind of comes back round on you. So we'll give it a, a mask up now, quickly go along the edges. Um, it's not too bad with this because we're going to give the bot the outsides of the sills um, some clear as well behind the trims. Yeah. So we can just mask along the bottoms of the doors and the wings along here mm -hmm. and just to uh, stop the overspray. So Super. Top is, uh, gun, no less. Top gun. Yeah. This is um, what you use. What I use for when I'm doing painting, mm -hmm. it's kind of um, it's a bit like a cling film. It's kind of slightly static, yeah, and it, and it sticks to the car. You might need to hold this side just to because uh, it'll kick over. Otherwise, that's it. And heels. There we go. Yeah. Oh yes, quite clingy. We've got the uh, car beautifully wrapped and uh, now we're, we're going to use some carrier bags to cover up the brakes. So. Yeah, it's just, 
stops any wax overspray then from getting onto the brake disc and giving you bad brakes. Something sometimes people miss. It's always worth covering them up, mm. especially with wax because it takes quite a bit of effort to burn them off again. Yes. Yeah, the filler neck has probably gone a little bit die has to, but uh, hasn't gone through yet. No, there's no smell of fuel or anything, so we'll just give it a good coating of under seal mm. to get the loose off of it. There we go, nice bit of black on the sills, done the front subframe as well, looking good. And now we are, I say we, Tim is preparing the anchor wax. So I'm quite intrigued, I've never really seen this stuff before. So Tim's had a good shake. Oh yeah, that is quite runny, isn't it? Perfect. Much, much thinner than wax away, it really gets in all the crevices. Yeah, and especially important this time of year, because ideally with a lot of the wax products, you want to apply them in the summer when they're, they're nice and runny, but even though it's not usually hot today, that's running nicely. So yeah, just a quick demonstration of what this lance does. It goes everywhere. Yeah. So that's what you want. You can insert it way deep into the sill and pump the wax right where it needs to be. Oh yeah, that's gone all the way to the back. Lovely. Quite a cool effect, you can see it's smoking out of the sill holes. Lovely. Plenty of coverage. Onto the chassis rails. Lovely. I go forwards and backwards from both directions in case there's a shadow. Okay. So uh, I think it's fair to say this job has lasted a little longer than either of us really wished for, uh, the joys of old cars. But while I've been off having dinner and running a hublet to scouts, Tim has been busy waxing away. So this anchor wax gives us the advantage that this is all now coated in wax but we can still see the factory colour. So I think that is a very fine outcome indeed. So now we've just got the frustrating business of trying to refit bits of plastic and uh, some trim clips are broken, some are not. Um, I think for a Daihatsu job, this has gone quite badly. Their clips aren't usually that bad, but these ones are definitely um, causing a few issues. So we may have to find some alternative ways of attaching the sill trims, but yeah, it's all looking very, very good. See, this side all done. And lo, after many, many hours, it is done. Uh, the Sirion is waxed and uh, Tim probably never wants to work on the Daihatsu <laughs> ever again. But uh, we, we've learnt much today. We have, yeah. 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 The, um, the bit of welding was the unexpected thing for us there, but um, we're, um, we got done inside the bottoms of the doors as well. Behind the slam panel. Slam panel inside all the box sections. So, so yeah, good to go. we've done our best to try and stop it rusting and we will hope that would be good enough. But yeah, a goodly amount of work. So thank you very much. That's right. uh, we, we haven't worked out the bill yet because we're literally only just finished, but there will be a charge for this. I'll try and update you um, going forward. But uh, yeah, work well done. A free car never stays free for long, but this one is so good. I simply had to do my best to preserve it. Yeah, for, definitely. For once. Super. Well, well, thank you very much. No it's problem. been a, a, a tough old day, but we got there. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you in a future video for more adventures of Miss Daisy. Farewell. Bye.